The NCAA announced on Friday, uh, Friday afternoon, late Friday, this was a news dump, that they are going to review NIL. And they're going to review NIL principles, uh, policies, including impact on student-athletes and potential recruiting uh, violations. Basically, uh, we've had one season where college athletes have been allowed to profit off of their name, image, and likeness. And they're going to start reviewing this stuff now, which I find comical at best because the NCAA has zero teeth at this point. We just got done with an NCAA Board of Governors meeting where they took a lot of the responsibility off of themselves and gave it back to the conferences. Now, I understand NIL is basically the the wild, wild west at this point. There are still laws, eh, not laws, there are NCAA rules in regards to NIL where you are not allowed to use it to help with recruiting or anything along those lines, right? Uh, they Basically, they met virtually on Friday. They agreed to task the Division I Council with a review of how NIL policies, or lack thereof, have affected athletes' uh, school choice, transfer opportunities, academics, and their mental health. It says, we want to preserve the positive aspects of the new policy while reviewing whether anything can be done to mitigate the negative ones, said board chair and University of Georgia president, uh, Jir Mohead. Uh, Moorhead, excuse me. This is... So the reason that they're doing this, and it says here, in a news release, the board cited concerns about potential violation of NCAA recruiting rules, the representation for athletes as they broker these deals, booster involvement, as well as schools being involved in potentially arranging deals for incoming players. Chris and I have talked about this on the show before, about coaches not being able to broker these deals, the schools not being able to broker these deals. That doesn't mean that they are not going to have some kind of representation and that representation, uh, representation, as it sits right now, I I think they're not supposed to have it. But how can you stop it? If there's no money exchanging hands or anything like that, what are you going to do? I just, I, I don't know how uh, conducting this review or anything like that is going to change anything at all when it comes to this. So them talking about reviewing NIL stuff is just a farce at this point. Uh, they're going to, what they're doing basically is telling everybody, yeah, yeah, we're going to look into it because there's a lot of people that are upset about it, especially, you know, everybody talked about Texas A&M's number one recruiting class. But when it comes down to it, it, basically it's, everything is just above board now. You can just flaunt it if you want it, right? If you want to get the story out there that you are being paid to attend, da 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 da, or you're uh, making money to stay in school or the school is paying you whatever, the stuff that's going on, such as uh, at Texas, right? Texas is paying. They've got some deal put together where every Texas offensive lineman is going to make $50,000 a year. It seems like a pretty good deal. Gene Chizik had a big problem with it. Of course, now he's back in college football. But regardless, those kind of things I don't believe you were supposed to be able to do. But if a if an organization comes up with an idea and they want to get, and they don't care about the name, they don't care about who it is, whatever, they just want this particular brand, this particular uh, player or type of player to represent their product. How are you going to stop it? Like, I have, I have no idea how you go into this and try and set rules after you have already let this stuff go out. There are going to be a lot of people ineligible and a lot of different waivers and whatnot that you're going to have to fight through if you decide to go back on this now, which is one of the biggest reasons why we didn't think it was necessarily such a good idea, or at least I didn't. I'll say that. Uh, I didn't think it was such a good idea to just let this thing be wide open immediately. Like, come up with some kind of... Gra- like, what Mark Emmert and those guys have done is just egregious because you could have written this thing out and made it somewhat... And I understand that they had the lawsuit uh, that went to the Supreme Court and they basically dared anybody in the NCAA to not allow these kids to make money. I understand that. But even before all of that stuff went on, that was the Austin case, by the way, even before all of that, you had multiple years and multiple opportunities to write out your own legislation for this. And instead, they tried to go to Congress with it. And we all know how Congress works. I mean, what are we talking about here? Uh, This whole thing was just absurd. Absolutely absurd. And so... You know, we'll see what comes of it, but my guess would be nothing. 
because that's what the NCAA is doing best. Nothing. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.